You are not too old to become a grandmaster, even though I know you didn't start playing chess as a baby. This is Tyler, a famous streamer who started playing chess less than a year ago. He was rated 100 back then and now he's rated 1900. More than 169 million people on chess.com. Most chess masters started playing chess when they were in a race to the uterus. So obviously most people assume that you have to be a 5 year old to start playing, otherwise you will never become a grandmaster. And while it's true that a baby has more brain neurons than an adult, their brain is just a tangled up mess. No, no, no. You yeah. no. A baby needs a full year of hearing sounds before it can produce a basic two syllable word. Fuck. <laughs> While an adult can memorize a full phrase of another language within a minute. See where I'm going? A famous chess master once said, it's not about the age, it's about the spare time. And who do you think has more spare time? A grown up who has a job and a family, or a kid whose only worry is what to play the next day. One of the strongest players of all time, Akiba Rubinstein, was over 16 years old when he just learned how to move the pieces. Is that still too young for you? Okay, Mikhail Shigarin, top 5 of the universe at the time, didn't start playing chess until he was about 25. He became founder of the Russian school of chess, playing for the world championship title twice versus Willem Stanitz, the first official world champion. Tyler did not start playing at 5 years old, in fact he was 28, that's older than 95% of my viewers, and he has achieved a rating that most people only dream of. Most people said it was just beginner's luck, and he was going to run out when he reached 1300, but then he reached 14, 15, 1800, and he's not interested in stopping. So where is the limit then? Well it's pretty obvious, there isn't a limit, you can keep learning and improving as long as you keep putting up the work, I'm not gonna lie, you do need a lot of time and money. That's right, chess tournaments are not cheap and you also have to afford coaches to help you speed up the process. No chess prodigy in the planet is getting good without a helping hand. Tyler just a couple of weeks ago defeated a 2100 rated opponent, that is the highest rated opponent he has ever defeated and he has of course the white pieces and he plays the cow opening. In case you don't know, this is a very recent opening that was introduced by the famous streamer Anna Kramlin. Bishop to e2 by Tyler, pawn to g6 by his opponent, and e4 getting some space in the center, bishop to e6 and bishop to f3 putting another defender on the pawn on e4. Bishop to h6 and knight to b3 asking this bishop what do you want to do with your life, do you want to, do you, do you want to trade, do you not, bishop takes c1 and queen takes c1. Now this pawn was, was attacked by the knight on b3, so his opponent goes queen to b6 defending the pawn. Queen to g5 now attacking the knight on f6 and the knight goes to h7 now attacking the queen on g5. Now the queen goes to h6 and you cannot move this knight otherwise you will lose the rook on h8 and his opponent goes pawn to d4. We have a3 by Tyler preventing any knight to b4 ideas which would be threatening knight takes c2 with a fork to the king and the rook on a1. Pawn to a5 by his opponent trying to go pawn to a4 to take away the knight from b3. We get a short castle by Tyler, pawn to a4 attacking the knight on b3 which goes to d2 and long castles by his opponent. Knight to c4 attacking the queen on b6 also defending the pawn on b2. So of course his opponent does not like this knight right there and he goes bishop takes c4. Pawn takes c4 and queen takes b2. Queen to g7 by Tyler now attacking the pawn on f7 and his opponent defends the pawn with the rook. Rook to f8 defending the pawn, and now Tyler sacrifices the knight on h5, that is brilliant. This knight on g3 is really restricted, it is not doing anything at all. So Tyler says, you know what, we might as well take a couple of pawns in exchange for this knight. Pawn takes h5, bishop takes h5, now attacking the pawn on f7. Queen takes c2 and bishop takes f7. Of course you cannot take this bishop, otherwise the rook on h8 would fall. Queen takes e4 now by his opponent and bishop to e6 giving a check to the king on c8. The king goes to b8 and now rook to b1 threatening checkmate in one move on b7. So now his opponent goes knight to d8 defending the b7 pawn with the knight and with the queen on e4. But now Tyler finds the brilliant bishop to d5 attacking the queen, attacking the pawn on b7 one more time and it doesn't matter where, the, where this queen goes, the next move is gonna be bishop takes b7 followed by some discovered checks and checkmate is just not far away and in this position his opponent resigned the game. But this right here is the highlight of the game, knight takes h5, that is brilliant. The computer doesn't like this move because you're opening up lines in front of your king but Tyler does not want to stay passive, he wants to look for activities and eventually paid off really well. You also take advantage of the b file in front of your king, you open up lines with the bishop with giving checks and this is just really really hard to play against. And this other game was just played a week ago, this is versus a 2000 rated player, now Tyler has the black pieces but you know what, he does not care, he, he's also playing the cow opening now with the black pieces, that's crazy. Pawn to e3 opening up the line for the bishop, knight to d7 and bishop to c4 by his opponent. Now Tyler short castles and knight to e2 by the white pieces, I'm not sure what that move does. 
pawn to a5 by Tyler, maybe looking for some pawn to b5 and bishop to b7 ideas, short castles by his opponent, and pawn to c5 fighting for the center of the board, c3 and bishop to h4 looking for some trades. This is usually not a great idea because you're giving your opponent the possibility to take the bishop with the knight. They don't have to take with the bishop necessarily, but Tyler, I don't know, got lucky or his opponent doesn't know this, but he took with the bishop. Knight takes h4, knight takes h4, and queen takes h4. Now knight to g3 by his opponent, and pawn to b6, looking to develop the bishop via b7. But his opponent sees this idea and he goes queen to f3, preventing bishop b7. Now if you go bishop b7, of course, that's a free bishop. So Tyler prepares this move a little bit more and he goes rook to b8, with the idea of going bishop to b7 on the next move. But his opponent, again, does not allow this move and goes queen to c6, and if you go bishop to b7 now, this knight would be completely undefended and that would be just a free piece. Now Tyler goes pawn to d5, attacking the bishop on c4, which goes to b3, and we have queen to e7, defending this knight, preparing bishop to b7 on the next move. So his opponent goes queen to a4, we get knight to f6 by Tyler, and the bishop goes back all the way to d1. Pawn to a5, queen to c2, and bishop to a6, attacking the rook all the way down on f1. The rook goes to e1, and rook to c1, putting an x-ray with the queen on c2. His opponent goes bishop to e2. He wants to get rid of this very annoying bishop on a6. So Tyler is down, he takes a bishop on e2. Queen takes e2 and pawn takes d4. C takes d4 and now the c file is completely open for Tyler to double up the rooks on the c file. Queen to d2 and now queen to b4 by Tyler. Now that he has full control of the c file, he wants to get rid of the queens to make things more simple. Rook takes e7, rook takes e7, queen takes b4, and we have a queen trade on b4. Rook to e2 by the white pieces, preventing any very annoying rook to c2 taking all these pawns, and the rook goes to c1 with a check. You have to cover up with the knight, and now knight to e4. Pawn to f3, kicking the knight out, which goes to d6 now, and now knight to c4, putting pressure on the pawn on b2. Pawn to b3, attacking the knight, which goes to a5, and this is not the greatest move, this is not the greatest square for the knight, because as you can see, it doesn't have too many options. It would have been better to go knight to d6, preparing knight to b5, and now you would have these two beautiful squares. But knight to a5 is not terrible either, his opponent goes knight to g3, and we get pawn to g6 by Tyler, beautiful move, restricting the movement of this knight quite a lot. Pawn to e4 by his opponent, he wants to explode the center, and king to f8 by Tyler. Rook to d2, and now Tyler realizes that this knight is really not doing too much on the rim of the board, so he goes knight to c6, improving the position of the knight. Pawn takes d5, pawn takes d5, and knight to e2, preparing knight to f4, putting pressure on the pawn on d5. Rook to a1 by Tyler, attacking the pawn on a2, which is currently defended by the rook on d2. Knight to f4, attacking the pawn on d5, and the only way to defend this pawn is to go knight to e7, and Tyler finds this move. Knight to d3, now attacking the pawn on b4, and Tyler goes back with the knight to c6 to defend that pawn, and also to put pressure on the pawn on d4. Rook to c2, now attacking the knight on c6, which takes the pawn on d4, and attacks the rook on c2 at the same time. Rook to c8 check, king to g7, and now his opponent takes the pawn on b4. And not only do they take the pawn on b4, but they also manage to take the pawn on b6, and now Tyler is down a pawn versus a 2000 rated player on this endgame. But his opponent brings the king all the way down to g1, giving Tyler the possibility to attack the pawn with the knight and with the rook. So his opponent goes pawn to g3, rook to g2, uh, forcing the king to go to h1, that's the only square you can go. And now Tyler goes rook to f2, attacking the pawn on f3, and something a little bit more serious than that, which would be rook to f1 checkmate. You cannot go to g2 with the king because of this knight on e3. So now the white pieces go pawn to h4, giving the king some air, and Tyler grabs the pawn on f3. King to h2 by his opponent, and knight to f5, attacking the pawn on g3 twice. Now his opponent takes the pawn on d5, and Tyler grabs the pawn on g3. We have pawn to a4 by his opponent, he wants to start running with the pawns to promote to a queen. And now Tyler goes rook to d3, attacking the knight on d5, which goes to f4, now attacking the rook on d3, and Tyler gives a check on d2. King to h3 and rook to f2, attacking the knight one more time. The knight goes now to g2, and we get rook to f3 by Tyler. The king goes to the wrong square, to g4, giving Tyler the possibility to grab the knight on g2 for free. And now the black pieces are up a full piece, so it is very simple to stop these pawns from getting too far, and eventually Tyler managed to promote a queen and checkmate the king on g6. It is never too late to get better at anything. Start working and stop making excuses. But don't just say, nah, I didn't start playing when I was five, I'm never gonna be a grandmaster. That's crazy talk. A grandmaster is not a fucking alien, it's someone who failed more than you did, but they took the failure to improve. So you start doing the same thing and you will see good results. And if you like the video, make sure subscribe and turn on the notifications and I will see you tomorrow in the next game.